Hi everybody, my name is Kuno Whitmer, factory driver for SRT Motorsports and uh, we're here in uh, sunny Canadian Tire Motorsports Park and uh, basically what we're going to show you today is the wonderful Viper SRTs uh, fabricated by Riley Technologies. So basically the cars are very very similar to what you see on the street as far as the shape of it uh, with the addition of a lot of goodies. So uh, definitely if you just get a Get a get an angle on the on the motor here, you know something you don't get in the streetcar really is this massive carbon fiber intake and uh, and also the motors have been detuned as we say for regulation. So the streetcar has an 8.4 liter V10. This is an 8 liter V10 producing about 120 150 horsepower less than the streetcar. Kind of sucks having you know the power all out of it, but you you got to fit into regulations. Be fair with the other guys. And uh, that's, that's primarily due to these restrictors right here. So these restrictors restrict about 28% uh, of air coming in. And uh, that's, that's how we're down on power really and uh, compared to the other guys. And uh, if we work our way towards the, uh, the brake system. So what we have here are, you know, basically some very, very high-end, high-tech American Le Mans brake packages. Uh, you're looking at uh, no ABS, so you could easily lock up a wheel in low speed corners. And why I say that in low speed corners, because in high speed you have so much downforce on the car that you could just bury your brake, your brake pedal at about 800 PSI with your foot and then back out of it so you don't lock up any wheels. And uh, that's something that's pretty big on this car. It's also an advantage that we have with, the, with having so much aerodynamics on the car that we could benefit with all these big brakes. And we have the same package near the rear. If we work our way around the front again, so if we look at one of the uh, one of the aero enhancements are these dive planes right here. So if you look at if you look at the car, the wind comes from the front. The faster we go, the more downforce we have. Comes onto the front dive planes, comes onto the front nose, goes onto the hood, which is in the back over there, but and then goes over the car onto the rear wing and now underneath the car which we can't get access to but there's also a big flat bottom which produces a lot of downforce as well when you're at high speeds and when I say high speeds the aerodynamic would start anywhere around 80 miles an hour and then up to 180 miles an hour so if we look at some of the key aero pieces as well even the mirrors are very very you know very thinned out for aero very important. The car is very, very slippery. Very, very neat in high-speed corners. And uh, you know, just for an example, I've driven, I've driven a wide variety of cars here in in, uh, in Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. And this is this is by far the highest downforce car I've ever driven. So in corners, like in corners one, two, and three, where I would be doing 100, 100 miles an hour. In this car, I'm doing 120, 140 miles an hour, which is nuts, <laughs> but a lot of fun. And uh, if we look at some of the key stuff back here, we have this massive wing that produces a lot of downforce. And at a track like this, we're using up as much downforce as we can because the corners are so fast. And we're constantly in fourth, fifth, sixth gear, more than first gear and second. We'll work our way to the back of the car. Again, everything is effective on this car. Nothing is left to the unknown. Nothing is left to be just on the car or and no nut and bolt is just to be screwed on or anything like that. Everything is effective, along with the wing, along on how the air comes through the sides. The rear diffuser, this is what we call a diffuser. So the, the bottom is very, very flat, kind of comes up like this, a big piece of carbon fiber that goes all the way to the front. And this produces, again, a lot of downforce with the wing and everything working in effect. The car was pretty much designed in a wind tunnel. And, and everything we did in a wind tunnel, the amount of days we spent in a wind tunnel, to have access to a wind tunnel is already a, a privilege. And then to fabricate a car out of it, like, like Riley Technologies did, I mean, not many teams have that, that benefit. So this is, this is quite extraordinary to just be driving these cars. If we look on top of the uh, roof, we have a little antenna. This little antenna right here relays basically live telemetry from what the car is doing to the pit lane during any session. Even when the car is running right here. When we're starting up the, starting up the engine, this antenna transfers information such as water temperature, oil temperature, uh, oil pressure, battery voltage, and so on. I mean, there's so many channels 
Even on all the wheels, we have different uh, sensors for suspension, tire pressure, engine pressure. E everything is measured. Everything, everything, everything. And you know, even ride height, aerodynamic downforce, everything. I, I could keep going with a list that you wouldn't believe. But you know, the engineers need to see exactly what's going on with the car on track. We don't necessarily, as drivers, have much time in the car to to relay all that information through because we're we're working so hard on making the cars go fast through the corners. And at this level of competition, you know, we're running we're running at such high speeds, especially here, that we, on top of that, we have to fight with other cars on the track and manage our tires, manage our fuel, and everything. That it's it's easier for three engineers to to be our eyes. So. On top of that, you know, if we look just quickly inside the car, it's it's really quite luxurious if you look at it. Pretty neat stuff, you know, the wheel, the wheels right here. We, our seating position is nearly just perfect. We did 24 hours of Le Mans about a month ago. I ended up driving 11 and a half hours. No cramping, no headaches, no problem. This car, this car is just so fun to drive. And it, it all comes down to seating position and the way the car was fabricated. Uh, the pedal assembly moves back and forth for different driver sizes. You know, we have we have one driver on our team by the name of Tommy Kendall, who's six foot three and above. So he's quite a tall guy. Got some long legs. And uh, when he jumps in the car, he moves the pedals forward. When I jump in, move the pedals back. The steering and everything stays the same. So what we do play with on the wheel, which comes off pretty quickly. This is the wheel right here. So we have basically. The really cool functions, such as traction control, less traction control, more. So if we're going through the corners and we feel that the car is sliding a little bit off the line, which is, you know, the geometrical apex uh, off the um, off the curbs, then we feel that the car needs a little more traction control. We put another click into it, and this keeps going along the race as we're managing tires, managing fuel. This this is for three hours straight. Uh, along with the steering wheel, we have certain buttons such as. Uh, pit limiter. We have uh, the lights, the radio to communicate with the team, which we're doing about six times during the lap, give or take. Uh, the drink button, you know, because you need to stay hydrated. And other switches along with paddle shift. So these cars are all paddle shift. Everything's electronic in the car. Uh, along with certain other cool things that we have in the car, we have an air conditioning system, which regulates the temperature of the car throughout the entire race. And we, you know, in, in Fahrenheit, we're looking at about 90 degrees, 88, right around there, cool temperature for the entire race. And basically it's blowing cold air on our feet, our chest, and we also have a blower that goes in our helmet to keep our head cool. That's the most important thing, or else you start losing focus as, uh, as you get fatigued. And, you know, other certain, certain things that, that people don't know is, is the, uh, the physical endurance that a driver goes through when racing one of these races in, in, a, in a GT car. In a, in a prototype car where everything's open, you have a little more benefit of having a, some, some wind hit you, some air. Where in these cars, we're closed windowed, closed cockpit, it sometimes can get pretty hot, even though we have AC systems. And some of the key things that drivers need to always go through is pretty intense physical conditioning programs. So, you know, number one is always the cardio has got to be tip top. You know, I myself do a lot of running, a lot of cycling, swimming, just any, any sport I could do to just stay active. Uh, nutrition is monitored, give or take five days or so before uh, we go into competition quite intensely. Uh, before that, you just, you know, we have, we have a diet we follow, but nothing, uh, nothing as intense as the four or five days before the competition goes. And you know, on board the car, like I mentioned before, we have water, about a liter of water that we just burned through in about 10 minutes if we could, but we have to manage it. And uh, that, this is pretty much what we go through. And we're about uh, 50 cars on track, give or take, with mixed classes, so it's a lot of action. Here at, at CTMP on the weekend, right now we're looking pretty good. We're, uh, right now uh, we're looking at uh, first place and fourth place right now in, in, our, in our standings and uh, qualifying this afternoon. We feel very confident. Our, uh, my teammates, Jonathan Bomarito, he'll be qualifying the car, starting the car, and at about an hour and five, hour and right around there, hour and two minutes, that's when I jump in the car and I finish off the rest of the hour and 45. So it should be nice, should be nice weather compared to what it's been here in the past. It's always been hot, muggy, but tomorrow should be beautiful. So uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for watching and hope to see you guys around.